From Thundercats to SWAT cats, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is a special Saturday morning cartoon episode of Um Actually. Joining us today, we have Emma Fife. Hello, I'm coming to you live, I say, because this is not actually live from my closet. Love. You're welcome. <laughs> also looks a lot like the I'm actually speech bubbles. I know, doesn't it? It's like pretty amazing. Uh, we have Winston A. Marshall. Hey, I cleaned my room for the first time in all of quarantine for this. <laughs> and we have Reka Shunker. Hi, I am also in Emma's closet. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> you the shitty half of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Uh, as I said uh, at the top, this is a special uh, episode on Saturday morning cartoons, uh, and hopefully, we got some some folks here who are who like their cartoons to to play with us. I love the cartoons I love. And, all, uh, and it is all from one narrow time period. So you're gonna have to hit me right there for me to know at all what you're talking about. And I will oh. give you a hint, I only like cartoons that look cute. Mm. <laughs> I, I will, so two thoughts on that. First is that uh, I was, uh, when we were putting this together, I was like, oh, I I know Reka loves cartoons. It should be great for this. On the other hand, because the field of like, cartoons is so wide the way i narrowed myself was like well let's do specifically saturday morning cartoons which is like cartoons that aired on broadcast channels yes. which is yeah. a band that is like very much like 80s through 90s and that's kind of it and it doesn't include like nicktoons and things like that which, which is know- rude which is rude if you do yeah. I, you know what I have to that that's what I'll say is why you got to be disrespecting Nicktoons like because that you know I know and that's prejudice and that's prejudice because that's the stuff I know about <laughs> ladies ladies that was going from morning to night Monday through Sunday that's so much to cover versus Saturday that was like what 6 a.m yeah. until about 11 maybe noon you in your pajamas Listen, I couldn't put mine I on because I had a Batman symbol on it Saturday morning is when Sometimes there were cuties that came out, but sometimes your ugliest cartoons came out on Saturday. Morning. <laughs> Ultimately, like I kind of had to make that call because I, I was like, I could do a whole episode on Nicktoons, and, and probably- you should. This is what we're starting with, but we might have a Nicktoons episode later on down the line. You've all played before, but so I'll explain the rules very quickly to anyone in the audience who isn't familiar. These are a stack of statements. These are incorrect statements about Saturday morning cartoons. It's up to you to find the thing that is incorrect, buzz in and, in and correct me. You can correct me whenever you want. You don't have to wait for me to finish. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually, and that's all there is to it. Cool, well, let's get started here. Buzzers at the ready. Um, remember to proceed with um, actually, and we'll we'll go with our first statement here. Duckburg, Calisota, USA isn't just home to the famed Scrooge McDuck and Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Bentina Beakley, Darkwing Duck, and Gizmo Duck all call the city home as well. Yes, Winston. Um, actually not Gizmo Duck? Uh, Gizmo Duck uh, is uh, is from Duckburg. Shit. <laughs> um, uh, Rika. Um, actually Darkwing Duck is not from Duckburg. That's correct. Did you know where he's from? He's from somewhere else. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the point unless someone could tell me where Darkwing Duck is from. Oh, I don't remember. Darkburg City. Uh, uh, yeah, you might be able to just guess it from punning. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> from Quackopolis? Quackington. <laughs> I was going to say Ducktropolis. <laughs> yeah, foul. He's from a foul place. Duck from City. I see a full like map of like the duck universe. Yeah. It's just all duck puns for like every yeah. fucking city. Rika, I will still give you the point for identifying what's wrong. Uh, Darkwing Duck lives in St. Canard, uh, which uh... is a different city across the way from Duckburg. Also worth noting, apparently Duckburg is located in Calisota, which is... <laughs> what, California <laughs> and Minnesota? Yeah. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, what, what a, what a combo. combination. Yeah. <laughs> ah, finally, two great tastes. <laughs> <laughs> you got California in my Minnesota. Yeah. You got Minnesota in my California. <laughs> oh, full of ducks. <laughs> <laughs> I do find it interesting that Darkwing Duck, he's he's supposed to be hot, right? Darkwing I, Duck? I mean, he's yeah, kind of a dad, dad energy, goofy, I think. Goofy Batman, yeah. Yeah, he is yeah. kind of good. I think that I think that it's uh, Darkwing Duck is a character I need to re-examine as an adult because as yeah. a child he had a niece that was like of an age with me, 
Why yeah. do all these ducks have nieces? Like all these ducks are just none of, none of them are actually procreated. They're like my sister yeah, here the back. Listen, <laughs> no, I don't fuck with women. Okay, I'm not gonna settle down. You can't type me now. <laughs> it, it is like a weird like asexualizing of everything where it's like, yeah. like I know people who fuck. I just don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, we, co it, I come from a large family. I have tons of siblings, so I've yeah. got nieces and nephews. Goofy had a son. So Goofy. Goofy had a son. Had a son. That's just so wild. I, I just, that's not. It is like so super canon. interesting that Goofy is the one, considering that both Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse have I canon the, girlfriends. Have twin yeah. girlfriends, yeah. Yeah. Oh my, like oh them. my God. So you're telling me that, that, that Mickey and Donald are safe and Goofy didn't wrap it up and that's what this whole thing was? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah maybe. Goofy's, that would be a Goofy's, very Goofy thing to do, you know? It's like, yeah, just like, oh, can you please oh, use a condom? He's like, it just doesn't feel good for me. Yeah. You have to know it kind of hurts me to use a condom condom and she's I mean, like, it's like okay. Those, like those in, old goofy cartoons where it's like, it's like, I'll show you how to work out, but he does everything wrong. Or it's just like, well, yeah. I don't, I can't work the condom. <laughs> I will say in, in Mickey and Donald's defense, uh, if they are cognizant of the fact that they are in Disney, it really is considerate of them to not impregnate their girlfriends because we know what happens to moms in Disney property. They die. They die. <laughs> they they all die. Well, on that, we gotta segue from there. Here is our next question. The Adventures of Teddy Ruxpin follows a young bear named Teddy Ruxpin in his quest to obtain a stash of crystals on Grundo. He is aided in his journey by many friends, including Grubby the Octopede, an inventor named Newton Gimmick, and a furry purple creature called the Wooly Whatsit, or Wooly for short. I mean, you know you made all that up, Travis. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, Emma has buzzed um, in. Actually, that Ollie the Octopede thing is 100% made up. Uh, Grubby the Octopede is, uh, is uh, a real real character. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Winston. Um, actually, this didn't air on Saturday. It aired on Sunday. And so this whole question is null and void. <laughs> uh, I will go ahead and say that none of the questions in here are relying on, on specific air times. So uh, no, that's, not, uh, that's not what we're going for here. Um, um, actually, it's not Grundo. Uh, it is uh, It is the land of Grundo. Because isn't a grundle like some sort of male genitalia situation? <laughs> a grundle is another word for the taint, if that's what you're thinking of. Uh, there it so is. We, you seem to be concerned that Teddy Ruxpin is traveling around the grundle in search of crystals. Is, oh, my is maybe... God. <laughs> Teddy is Ruxpin about... makes a big quest in some person's asshole looking for crystals. You're bringing a horny energy to this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I'm here for it's, it's all right. Quarantined, so, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, Teddy Rexman doesn't got no friends. <laughs> fucking alone. Quit dissing my man Teddy. Uh, uh, I'll go ahead and call it there uh, since we're, we're clearly flailing and we can only flail for so long. Um, the answer is very annoying, uh, which I will now share with you. Uh, uh, Teddy Ruxpin is actually not a bear. Uh, Teddy Ruxpin is an iliop. Uh, which is a creature that just happens to look identical to a bear, but is definitely not called a bear. It is called an Iliop throughout the entire series. Um, um <laughs> actually, is, uh... if it looks like a bear and it talks <laughs> like a bear, it's a bear. It's an Iliop. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, bears don't talk. Um, actually, yeah, bears don't talk. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll say no points for that one, but I sure enjoyed this trip around Grundo. <laughs> 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 In 1979, NBC began airing the Godzilla slash Globetrotters Adventure Hour, packaging together two 30-minute animated shows. Yes, Winston. Um, actually, if I remember correctly, wasn't it Scooby-Doo in the Harlem Globetrotters, not Godzilla? Um, there might have been that pairing, but there did exist uh, a, a Godzilla Globetrotters. Uh, the former was about Godzilla and his cowardly nephew, Godzuki. The latter followed the exploits of a fictionalized version of the Harlem Globetrotters that had been granted superpowers from exposure to the element Globotron. <laughs> um, actually, they didn't have superpowers. It was just like an ability for basketball that was increased. It was, it was, they were so good at basketball. It was they like, were just a, very, uh, it's not a super power. Oh, one, yeah. of was like, one of them was like Mr. Fantastic. He was stretching his arms. Like, yeah. no, I remember but all this. Michael Jordan but, did that in Space Jam, and that's normal. <laughs> that's not not, not. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, actually. 
Godzuki is not Godzilla's nephew. It's Godzilla's son because Godzilla definitely fucks. <laughs> Once again, weird, uh, the weird asexualizing of everything. Godzuki is nephew, uh, is uh, Godzilla's nephew. Ooh. Um, actually, it wasn't called the Harlem Globetrotters. It was called the Super Harlem Globetrotters. Winston, that's correct. Yay! I was like, wait a minute. I know I've heard about this before, but I just have to, rem I have to dig deep. I have to dig deep. Now, now the reason this is not quite as nitpicky as it originally seems is so what uh, indeed what was part of the show that I was describing is the Super Globe Trotters. Harlem Globe Trotters as a show also existed. It was a completely different animated show that was airing on CBS seven years earlier, and where they did not have superpowers oh, and mostly, God. I think, solved mysteries. Uh, so there somebody were... okay. is desperately searching for the Harlem Globe Trotters to do something. Yes. <laughs> there was this obsession, I feel like, in the '60s and '70s with, like making people who had nothing to do with detective work do amateur detective work. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if y'all read the Boxcar Children books yes. when you were kids, but yes. the first Boxcar Children book was about them being orphans living yeah. in a boxcar. Yeah. Every book after that, they're out there solving the mysteries. I remember, I read that book so many times because there's really nice descriptions of food in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Because they're like finding bread everywhere. Yes. <laughs> but then they all become like orphan, yeah, crime solvers in 45 <laughs> books after that. Uh, well, that point will go to Winston for identifying that there's both Super Globe Trotters <laughs> and the Harlem Globe Trotters. That's, uh, a, that's a good, clean point. Yeah, <laughs> that's a clean ass point. Very good. We'll move on to our next question, which is a fan submitted question. Oh. Uh, this comes to us from Ian Adams. <gasps> <clears throat> Hi, Ian. The Game Master featured a variety of characters from Nintendo properties, like heroes Kid Icarus, Mega Man, and Game Boy, as well as villains Mother Brain, Donkey Kong, and King Hippo. The show also starred original characters, like Princess Lana, who ruled Video Land in place of her absent father, and Kevin Keane, aka Captain N himself. Yes, Emma has um, been very close behind. Um, actually, Donkey Kong was not a villain on Captain N and the Game Master. He was, yeah. I was going to say that. Um, actually, how you going to have a character Game Boy? That's a that's a little cart that's like a, a console. So clearly that can't be a character. That's wild, son. Yeah, that is wild, but that is actually But a he character. is a character. Game Boy <laughs> can't be a character. This is a, okay. something of a pedantic answer here. Oh, but no. uh, several of the pre-existing characters that we mentioned, uh, but specifically including Mega Man, aren't technically Nintendo properties. Oh. All right. Capcom, that's what, but I just they're... assumed because it was on Nintendo. Mother Yeah, that is pedantic. <laughs> that is pedantic. Pedantic. I'm going to allow it because it's coming from a fan. Uh, wow. All right. All right. Well done, Ian. Hi, kill was, me, Ian. <laughs> and are, are you? Were you looking to add something, or are you? Yeah, I was just going to throw in. First of all, I was going to send you guys a picture of Game Boy from the show. Um, you know, <laughs> oh, in the chat. Uh, it does look like that. Just, if if Game really... Boy does not look like Bemo, I'll be furious. Bemo. Yeah, like yeah, I remember that. Like I think his face is very ugly. Yeah. Can <laughs> I say that? He looks like he's up to something. He's a <laughs> Big butter face. <laughs> I, I love the how how you have completely gone hot or not with all of these characters yeah, today. <laughs> I'm just gonna also add in that King Hippo is from Punch Out. That's why why he's a villain yeah. in it. Oh yeah. right, 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 right. Okay, right. and pick. Do we have a pick? Oh, you, you want go, you want to pick? Hippo's also like not a hippo, King right? Hippo. Just a very he's not a hippo. He's yeah, he's a very not. large man. Yeah. With so a name like King Hippo, you would expect him to be a sexy animal that we would want to fuck. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. Oh no! Oh, wow. yeah. <gasps> oh my Neither god! Neither a king like nor a hippo. This looks like the Mucinex boogers. <laughs> <laughs> Are his wow. pants lettuce? <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's made out of vegetables. Like, <laughs> like, what the hell? And he's got, you do see that he has two sets of eyes, right? There's like one in his crown and one under his nose. I don't. There's a lot going on there. It works, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he's a BLT. All right, well, we'll uh, go on to our next question, which is our first shiny question of the game. Oh boy. This is a game that we're calling What's Wrong With This Picture? So we're going to show an image here. Uh, first person who can identify the thing that we have changed to make wrong will get the point. So let's go ahead and take a look at that image. 
What is different? What is wrong here? Ooh. Oh, uh, Rika has buzzed in. Um, actually, this uh, pink unicorn doesn't have... This pink the horse doesn't have a horn. The pink one. The small <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, that is not what's wrong. Uh, I, I don't appreciate this judging of this horse uh, here, Rekha. Why is there a if, horse with a bunch of unicorns? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is Winston and then Eva. Okay. Um, actually, the the adult pink horse, she don't have a heart. That's not that's not that's not her symbol. She got another symbol, but she got it covered up with tattoo like corrective surgery or whatever it is. So that now it just looks like a heart. Then that's it. But that's not the real logo on her butt. Um, Winston, that's actually correct. I mean, hey. I don't know the color about uh, the the tattoo correction, but let's go ahead and take a look at what that should be. That's that. Yeah. The, uh, the heart with the crown is actually from Care Bears. That is, I believe, a uh, courage heart or brave hearts. Uh, sure. uh, a uh, lion heart, one oh, of those. Lion heart, lion heart. Yep. Yeah, I lion didn't heart. see that it was a crown. I was gonna say, um, actually, it looks like there's a pencil sticking out of the heart, but I was like, that's it, stupid. So I'll it, comment on clearly this fucking girl that doesn't belong in this show. Uh, <laughs> wow, Rick is trying to ostracize this fucking one. pony. <laughs> uh, only and her only hair matches her. I mean, she color. she is the most boring pony in this shot. Like we can't <laughs> we can't deny that. Uh, that is uh, zero points for Emma right now, two points for Winston, one point for Reka. But we have plenty of game left for people <laughs> to catch up. Here's our next statement. Many Saturday morning cartoons were shows adapted from feature films, including The Mask animated series, All Dogs Go to Heaven the series, and three different shows based on the 1984 movie Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, The Real Ghostbusters, and Extreme Ghostbusters. Uh, Winston buzzed in. The only Ghostbusters, um, actually, the real Ghostbusters is not one of the adaptations. Extreme is for sure, because I had the wheelchair dude. And then I, the regular Ghostbusters, but I don't think the real Ghostbusters was one. Uh, that is incorrect. The real Ghostbusters is the one that I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Rika. Um, actually, those other Ghostbusters shows you listed are not based on the 1984 version they're based on whatever is the sequel or something i don't know anything uh, uh, <laughs> i think that so i'll say this so like winston and reka you are both like in the right area the yeah. issue is with the ghostbusters but both yeah. of you were a little too uh a little too broad for me to give you the point um actually yeah. ghostbusters just ghostbusters mm -hmm. was like an animated television special it wasn't technically a series. <laughs> Ooh, you're so close. Uh, ah! You're uh, you're too. You're not. You're not right. So I'll tell Damn you. And we can say if someone's like, I should have gotten that point or whatever. So all those shows do exist as animated series. Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, and Extreme Ghostbusters. Ghostbuster, the show just called Ghostbusters, actually predates the movie Ghostbusters, ah! um, and it's not based on it at all. And in fact. The existence of that show is why the real Ghostbusters is called the real Ghostbusters because there was a legal dispute when they made the animated show as to whether or not they could call it Ghostbusters. Yeah, they couldn't, wow. so it became the real Ghostbusters. At once. That is a good that's piece of trivia that I am that now going to remember forever. Okay, interesting. <laughs> right, cool. Well, that's that. No points for that one, but there you go. That's that's Ghostbusters and why the real Ghostbusters <laughs> is the real <laughs> Ghostbusters, not that fake regular Ghostbusters. Yeah, giant Ghostbusters. <laughs> Anyone want to take a guess what the original Ghostbusters was about? The one that was just called Ghostbusters not based on the movie? It was about ghosts solving mysteries. <laughs> You're pretty close. <laughs> it's about a group of bumbling detectives who investigate ghost sightings. Okay. <laughs> Solve mysteries. Look at the ghosts. Wow. Uh, you know, there are all these gimmicks that promise a perfect night's sleep, but here's the thing. I don't care what your topper's made of. I don't care how heavy your blanket is. If you're sleeping on a terrible mattress, your sleep will be terrible too. That's why I recommend sleeping on a purple mattress. That's because only purple mattresses have the Gel Flex Grid. It's a super stretchy, ultra squishy material that adapts and flexes around pressure points and doesn't retain heat. The Gel Flex Grid is amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam which remembers everything, thanks to the Gel Flex Grid, purple mattresses bounce back as you move and shift, so you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you sometimes get with memory foam. I actually use a purple pillow every night and I sleep great on it. Honestly, I do love this pillow. Try your purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns and financing is available too. Getting a great night's sleep starts 
starts with having a great mattress. So get a Purple mattress. Go to purple.com slash actually and use code actually. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off your order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash actually, code actually, for 10% off your order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash actually, code actually. Terms apply. Great. Well, uh, we'll move on to our next question. In the show James Bond Jr., James Bond's son defends the world from global threats, some of which are orchestrated by villains from Bond films like Jaws, Mic Mac, and Auric Goldfinger. We also meet new characters like Goldfinger's daughter, Goldiefinger. No. (laughs) Winston. Um, Actually, despite the fact that James Bond apparently has sex with every single woman he ever comes into contact with, it was his nephew. That's correct. Bond, eh, 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 James Bond Jr. Ba-na-na-na. Yep, I remember that I show. I didn't expect that we would lead into this question having an extensive um, conversation about how there are so many nephews in cartoons. Uh, and I was like, oh shit, this question's going to be much easier than it would have been before. But I, I thought it was too stupid. I, knew, I was going to guess. I was going to guess that Goldie Finger was Goldfinger's niece. Yes. I just love the fact that he's a junior somehow, and yet that is not his not daddy. That's not, not how junior him. works. You can't just be like, oh, Uncle Uncle James Bond. I am James Bond Jr. It's like, no, 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 no. Here's, here's, my, here's my guess as to how this played out, right? So so James James is really infertile. That's what this is. And his brother, because apparently he has a brother, his brother died when the baby was born. And he was like, I'm just going to adopt my nephew, and you're just going to take my name. I don't care what your daddy tried to name you right before you died. Him? Did he tell him? Did he say, you're not my son, you're my nephew? It's, in, it's, he... it's in like the theme song. I just don't remember what particular part about <laughs> that it. James Bond song. Jr. It's not really his dad, but <laughs> it's like long and <laughs> yeah. He was um... a bastard. His uncle adopted him and then he gave him his own name. <laughs> he, oh, because he goes, he goes, he got the name from his uncle James, but he's dead to remain. <laughs> James Bond Jr. I I vaguely remember it. Wow. That's great. I I totally thought you were joking there that it was uh, included in the theme song, but that's great. No, he legitimately, and like you legitimately knew the answer. That wasn't, that wasn't even an educated guess based on everything else we've discovered over the course of this episode. (laughs) Never have I ever in a James Bond film seen them have a moment where he takes out a condom. So, you know. I watched the Goofy movie. I know how this works. (laughs) 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 It like blows up into a balloon and flies away. (laughs) Cool. Well, we'll move on to our next statement here. Inspector Gadget is the half-man, half-machine, crime-fighting detective star of the 1983 cartoon of the same name. While the show itself never delves into Inspector Gadget's origins, an official trading card revealed that Gadget was once an ordinary cop named Alex Murphy, who fell down a flight of stairs after tripping on a banana peel. Yes, Winston. Um, Actually, Alex Murphy is RoboCop. Alex Murphy is RoboCop, that's correct. (laughs) Uh, I thought maybe someone would at least be able to identify that if they weren't up on their deep uh, (laughs) trading car based Inspector Gadget lore. Um, I am shocked he is actually half machine, half man. I I thought he was 100% uncle. And just had a very <laughs> fancy coat. <laughs> with, with his, with his another niece guy who's hanging out yeah, with his another guy hanging out with his with niece. niece. This is the theme. No, where are the parents in these worlds? Like they just <laughs> said, fuck, like, take them. Like what okay. the fuck is going on? Is there a parent? The, I know the hang theory. Out with the cyborg uncle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I can't like, take care of you. I'm not qualified to take care. Of you. I think you're half robot, ex cop uncle who's constantly in danger. <laughs> I feel like Saturday morning cartoons obviously just conditioned us to believe that our aunts and uncles were cooler than our parents and like our lives would be more exciting if we just hung out with them. That's a good point. It's like adults who have a slightly mysterious life. So it's like, I don't, I can't prove that my uncle isn't a slightly goofy cyborg crime fighter who, right. who's out there. Yeah. Go, go gadget parenting. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that, that point's going to Winston for identifying that. And this will bring us to our next uh, shiny question. A weird thing about Saturday morning cartoons is that at this time, 
gosh, they sure loved evil organizations that were also acronyms. Uh, so uh, in this game, you're going to have two word banks. It'll be uh, a word bank of shows and a word bank of the evil organization that is featured on that mm. show. Uh, it'll be up to you to try to match the one to the other. This would be this kind of thing that would be normally easier to do if I had like boards to give you all and like things you could draw on. Instead, we're going to kind of do this one at a time. So okay, basically, cool. if you think you have like an, it's like I've got an answer buzz in we'll kind of quick draw this um and so i'll let everyone take an answer i'll reset the buzzers and everyone will kind of like go in for like the next round okay, okay. Uh, whoever has cool. the most gets the point whoever's the most gets the point okay got it let's take a look at these shows and evil organizations <laughs> okay uh, got, yeah <laughs> winston is buzzed in he's got one uh what do you what do you want here winston and um, and then Rekha, <clears throat> Cool. I'm um, actually Bucky O'Hare fought complex. That's correct. <laughs> Bucky O'Hare fought complex. Uh, uh, Reka was next. Who you got? Inspector Gadget fought mad. Uh, Inspector Gadget did fight mad. Uh, Emma, who you got? Mm, I'm going to go um, actually James Bond Jr. fought da, 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 da. Mavo. <laughs> Uh, that is incorrect. <laughs> I'm going to reset the buzzers for y'all to, to, if you think you got another one, to check back okay. in. Uh, so okay. just get ready for that quick draw. Reset. That is Winston, then Emma, and Rika is still pondering. Um, Actually, James Bond Jr. fought scum. James Bond Jr. did fight scum. Uh, Emma, who you got? I'm going to go, Um, actually, Chuck Norris Karate Commandos fought <laughs> Savage. That is incorrect, okay. uh, Reka. So Chuck Norris fought Vulture. Chuck Norris did fight Vulture. <laughs> that is two for Winston, two for Reka so far. So this will be process of elimination, right? This will basically be the last thing. So yeah. uh, I'm going to reset these buzz buzzers, and it'll be a quick draw to get that last that last uh, identifier. Okay. Oh, that was Reka first. Oh. Um, uh, Teddy, Teddy Ruxpin fought Mavo. Teddy Ruxpin did fight Mavo or it's Mavo. It's the one that sounds like the least like scary for like dumb little kids that want to watch a bear. <laughs> uh, and that, of course, means that Rambo, mm. the force of freedom, fought Savage. Um, <laughs> that is three for Reka, two for Winston. That means Reka is going to grab that point. Uh, so just to quickly run through, Complex Jeez. is, is actually, Complex is impossible to, and no one should get this. Complex is an anagram in the toad language for uh, for the word for feed me, which is like, you're just making shit up now. You no. just want to call it <laughs> Feed me? Disgusting. Me. Um, mad stands for mean and dirty. Right. Uh, oh, and in the Cold War, that's what it puts too? <laughs> uh, mothers against drunks. Um, ah! uh, uh, Vulture, uh, Vulture. Actually, they never revealed on the show what Vulture stood for. They were just like, "It's Vulture. It stands for something." That's <laughs> cool. uh, scum was saboteurs and criminals united in mayhem. Can I uh, guess what the V O stands for in Mavo? Sure. Villain organization. It, that is what the V O stands Ooh. for. You know what the M A stands for? Meanie and villain organization. <laughs> you're not. You're not far. It's monsters and villains organization. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bears are stupid. <laughs> uh, they're Iliops, Reka. Thank you very much. Uh, and, <laughs> and then finally, Savage stands for Specialist Administrators of Vengeance, Anarchy, and Global Extortion. Oh, my God. Uh, That's too many Writers' words. rooms. They yeah. were on. Yo. Yeah. They spent a half day figuring out the acronyms, and then they're like, we'll figure out the... They, yeah. they, they, they solve mysteries. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Our current score right now is zero for Emma, four for Winston, and two for Reka. And we're going to keep rolling right through. Originally created and developed by Hallmark Cards, Rainbow Bright tells the story of a young girl named Rainbow Bright in a gray wasteland. With the help of a sprite named Twink and a horse named Starlight, Rainbow Bright finds the color belt, rescues the color kids, defeats the King of Shadows, and restores color to the world. Yes, Winston. Um, actually, that's an episode of Powerpuff Girls where that mime, that clown turns into an evil mime and takes all the color away from everybody, and then Bubbles has to sing a song, and the song is amazing. Um, I'm not saying that didn't happen, but uh, I am. <laughs> that's not what we're looking for. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. All right, um, Emma. Um, actually, uh, Twink is not a horse. Twink is a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, as weird as it sounds, no, nah, she's got a horse named Twink. Uh, <laughs> cool. Well, we got a horse named Twink. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Rock- a sprite named. A sprite. A sprite. Named whatever. Yeah, a sprite me. named Twink, and we got Teddy Ruxpin exploring taint. taint yeah. <laughs> Come join me with my friend Twink. <laughs> He's hairless. He go to the Grundle. (laughs) Um, Actually, the show is not uh, just called Rainbow Bright. It's like Rainbow Bright subtitle. Now that's interesting because (gasps) that is technically true. Because I think it's like Rainbow Bright and the Color Kids or something like that. That's a bad Um, name. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds really bad. Oh my God. That sounds really bad. And honestly, and honestly, I think I should get a point for it because I called it out. Wait, wait, uh, you gotta hold on. You can't do that. If you go get, if anybody gets a point, you gotta get that to Emma. Emma, Emma, <laughs> Emma on the board finally. I, uh, but damn, you got a point in my heart for that for calling that out. We go to Al Sharpton right now. I go back <laughs> and shut that shit down. Can you check the insult? I could be misremembering. Uh, is there is there more to the title than just Rainbow Bright? Not from what I'm seeing okay. right now. It looks it like was, it was just Rainbow Bright. There was a book called Rainbow Bright and the Color Thieves. Okay. But- okay. <laughs> That's not better. That's not better. <laughs> That's not, you got to fix that. You can't. <laughs> what the fuck? Rainbow bright and all cops are good. Yeah. <laughs> Here. What the fuck? Well, if it's still Rainbow bright. Cards, and, I guess it's okay. Rainbow bright and blue lives matter. <laughs> Rainbow fuck? bright, the three fifths compromise. Oh my god. <laughs> Rainbow bright and the one drop rule. <laughs> Uh, Rainbow Bright at the paper bag test. Whoa. I know it doesn't matter, but we should all get a point for that. Yeah. <laughs> that was just sensible riffing. Uh, okay, well, then I have another, I think, educated guess. Um, actually, her girl name isn't Rainbow Bright. Rainbow Bright is like her superhero name. That's correct. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> That's almost like what I said. Fuck. <laughs> no, you said she wasn't a girl. That's the same fucking idea. <laughs> Get out of here. Uh, uh, so, yet yeah, Emma, uh, for 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 uh, most of the uh, of uh, of the show, and, or or at least this like this story as I described it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, her name is Wisp, and she's only given the name Rainbow Bright at the very end, uh, oh. after after all the events described, after she finds the color belt and defeats the King of Shadows and does all the things that I I said happen. Well, we gotta we gotta move on before we step in something extremely problematic. <laughs> oh, we did. I, I think we're already in it. We're well past that. We be fucking and then slave tales, the Rainbow <laughs> Bright Adventures. Like I mean, we we had already stepped in it, bro. We <laughs> Dead, man. These tales in the rainbow bright bitches is the crazy. Love that. That'd be better. Slave tales of the rainbow bright bitches. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh, All right. Well, here's our next one. In Disney's Adventures of the Gummy Bears, the Gummy Glen Gummies are some of the last remaining gummy bears. Though they later find a group of Barbic gummies living in the abandoned Great Gummy City of Ursalia, most of the other Great Gummies were killed by humans hundreds of years before the events of the show. Um, actually, uh, the yes. gummy bears were not killed by humans. That's very, that would be way too dark for children's programming. <laughs> you are correct. Uh, yes. that is, uh, they were not killed by humans. They are absent. Uh, do you know, uh, do you know where the, what's the deal with the great gummies? Um. Oh, do you know, Reka? Cause I, I don't believe that I, I know, but they're at, I, a, key, they're at a key party. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 Emma, I, I'll give you the point. Okay. Uh, you're close enough there, and you got that pretty quick. They're um, in another dimension. You're not far. I mean, <laughs> it's what the, what's actually going on here is they've there's a real like a Lord of the Rings elves situation going on with oh, the great gummy. Oh, oh, they, they've moved they, on to the Undying Lands. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> They, they, the great gummies sailed across the sea, <laughs> and they left a few 
basic cells of other gummies, uh, including the gummy Glen gummies, to basically tell them when it was safe for them to return. Once, like, once humans and gummies could learn to live okay. in harmony, then but they would how, come back. How did they decide which gummies were going to be the ones who got left behind? Excellent question. It's an excellent question. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> this brings us to our last shiny question here. This is a game uh, we're calling Find the Fake. So uh, not every Saturday morning cartoon is fondly remembered today. There were a whole bunch that kind of came and went and maybe you didn't see. So on, uh, once we flip over here, you're going to see six uh, images depicting uh, sort of like the title screens of some Saturday morning cartoons. Five of these are real Saturday morning cartoons. One of them is something we just made up. First person mm -hmm. who can find the fake one will get the point. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those shows. What do we got here? <laughs> uh, Winston has buzzed in. Um, actually, <clears throat> I don't think there was a E.T. show. Uh, uh, Winston, that's correct. The E.T. <clears throat> is the fake one here wow. uh though there were a ton of, sh of of movies from the 80s that were adapted into shows and though uh et very famously had things like video game adaptations yeah um, uh this uh this is a show that did not exist the rest of these are all real including Dang. Uh, don coyote and sancho panda uh Curl bleep mr bogus potato head kids and starcom the u.s space force wait a minute Boy. so you're telling me that trump put all this shit out here <laughs> ass from when he watched Starcom in his footy pajamas oh, back in the 80s. This oh is like my bullshit. God. <laughs> Sorry, the Don Coyote thing, because I didn't even read, I read it as Don Quixote and Santa <laughs> Panza. I did not read the animals, and I'm like, they're not even well featured. They're both like thin mm -hmm. and to the side. I really just see the big genie. And then Mr. Bogus, I feel very bad for him. I remember that one. I remember Mr. Bogus. Yeah, I have a vague <laughs> memory of Mr. Bogus. I couldn't yeah. tell you what it was about, but I looked at that and I was like, no, nah, I remember that. That's no, real. No, that looks right. Colonel Bleep, I don't remember at all. <laughs> well, cool. That point will go to Winston. Well, this is our last question of the game. Uh, Emma has two. Winston has five. Rika has two. Winston's pretty much run away with this, but it's a race for second place. This uh, last question, as always, concerns mm. real life skills. Real life skills, not about cartoons this time. Cartoon villains aren't the only ones who like acronyms and initialisms. The business world is filled with them, too. Some important ones to know include TK, which stands for Temporarily Kept, YTD for Year to Date, CPM or Cost Per Thousand, and B2C for Business to Consumer. Oh. Yes, Reka, and then uh, Emma, very close behind. TK stands for, like, to come. It's like a purposeful misspelling so that you know n not to leave that in there. <laughs> Uh, Reka, that is correct. I don't know if you said um actually, but um actually, uh, <laughs> hey, um actually, TK stands for to come, bitch. <laughs> Normally, I wouldn't give it to you, but we're so far in the game. I just can't, can't, I can't be bothered. You can't bear seeing me only get two points in the very beginning based on guessing <laughs> nothing by the end. <laughs> um, that's correct. TK actually stands for to come uh, and is just uh, a, a weird misspelling in part because the uh, the letters T and K appear so irregularly in yes. English that you can yes. search for them very easily. Uh, that is correct. We'll give that point to Reka. Uh, final score here is five for Winston, uh, three for Reka, two for Emma. That makes Winston our game for this Saturday morning. <laughs> I'm gonna go put on my Batman pajamas and eat Lucky Charms. <laughs> Giant ball, big spoon, fucking sitting cross-legged right there. Watching the all TV. these orphans just just uh, go on adventures, solving <laughs> mysteries, and and wondering why their parents have been fucking at this orgy for 12 years. <laughs> I do think that I. I mean, the reason must be to asexualize them. I mean, that's like. Yes. Oh, it's a hundred percent what it is. It's yeah, you you can't have main characters be 
children of adults who you then have to confront, especially when you have things like DuckTales, which are spun off from something that has so many other characters. Like we can't, they can't just be like Donald's kids. Cause then it's like, well, Donald and Daisy, they fucked. I like that we, uh, that like the reasoning is like, it's well, we can't sexualize them. And instead we have just sex sexualized the aunts. Their and siblings. All, uh, <laughs> and it's like, it's like, like it's like, oh yeah, we just want to leave sex out of it. It's like, I bet they're all in a big orgy. And yeah. now all these characters are together doing a big old key party, yeah. sweet party. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and sign out here. So uh, thank you for playing with us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, come back next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Um Actually.